We interrupt your regular viewing to bring you this breaking news story. A five-year-old boy was taken to hospital today after continually coughing and suffering from respiratory problems. Our reporter, Chester Cock, is at the University of New South Wales with an expert in respiratory diseases, Dr. Breathe Easy. Thanks, Rick. Chester Cock here with Dr. Breathe Easy. Doctor, can you please explain to us the passage of the air as it is inhaled? Mm -hmm. Air is inhaled through the nostrils and then further warmed and filtered in the nasal passage. From there it moves on to the pharynx and larynx and from there onto the trachea, where it's then divided into two tubes called the bronchi. From there it's divided into a few more tubes called the bronchioli, and from there even more, more tubes called the alveoli. Oh, fascinating. What are these alveoli? Well, the alveoli are small sacs where the oxygen is diffused into the bloodstream from the lungs. Thanks, doctor. Well, now we're done with the boring anatomy. Can you let us know what happens during an asthma attack? Mm -hmm. Asthma is a result of the hypersensitivity of the bronchial tree in the respiratory system. Many factors can induce what is effectively an allergic reaction to the bronchial tree. Allergens include pollen, dust, animal hairs and cigarette smoke. Oh wow! Do any factors contribute to the narrowing of these airways? Mm -hmm. In fact, there are two factors which contribute to what is known as bronchoconstriction. The first is a contraction of the smooth muscle cells lining the bronchioles. The contraction is a result of the inflammation in the walls of the bronchiole. The second is an increase in mucin production by the goblet cells and a leakage of plasma proteins from the surrounding blood vessels into the lumen. These, build up, these lead to a buildup of mucus within the bronchiole and may cause a mucus plug that obstructs the passage of air. Inflammation and excess mucus production both lead to an increased resistance to airflow. Thanks, Doctor. During physical activity, the body needs more oxygen, and as a result, regular nasal breathing is supplemented with breathing through the mouth. The air through the mouth has not been warmed by the nasal passage, and is colder when it reaches the lungs. Similarly, at night, the air is cooler than during the day and is also cooler when it reaches the lungs. The cold air irritates the bronchial tubes, causing them to swell and the muscles around them to contract. This narrows the airway passage and an increase in mucus production creates further blockage, resulting in difficulty breathing. In quiet breathing, the main muscle of respiration is the diaphragm. As it contracts, lung pressure decreases, drawing air down into the lungs down the pressure gradient. Quiet breathing expiration is passive. Here, the respiratory muscle relax and the chest wall and lung return to their resting volume. Inspiration during exercise is aided by the external intercostals. They raise the ribs up and out, expanding the thoracic cage. The scaling muscles and sternomastoids also raise the upper ribs and sternum. This allows more airflow into the lungs. In active expiration, the abdominal muscles contract, which increases intra-abdominal pressure, pushing the diaphragm up. The internal intercostal assists by pulling the ribs down and in, decreasing the thoracic volume. Due to the pressure increase, air flows out. Bronchodilators come in three forms, beta agonist, anticholinergic and theophylline. Anticholinergic bronchodilators are mainly used for chronic respiratory diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and take the longest to work. Theophylline bronchodilators are taken either by swallowing or injecting intravenously. It stays in the system for a long time, but they can have many side effects. Beta agonist bronchodilators are the most common form. These are inhaled in a mist and are used as a preventative medication or as a quick fix when an attack occurs. Beta agonists are respiratory selective particles that seek out the beta receptor sites of the lung. Once attached, these cause stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system, which causes relaxation and dilation of the bronchioles and airways. This allows a greater volume of airflow as well as a smoother flow rate, which returns the subject's breathing back to normal. Corticosteroids are small hydrophobic molecules that freely cross the plasma membrane. Within the nucleus, steroids enhance the activity of compounds that reduce transcription of inflammatory proteins. They are generally considered the most effective treatment available for long-term control of asthma, but also are a treatment for severe asthma. Most importantly, corticosteroids are fast-acting when inhaled and prevent asthma symptoms by 
blocking the late phase immune reaction to an allergen, reducing airway hyperresponsiveness, and decreasing inflammation and inhibiting inflammatory cells such as mast cells, eosinophils, and basophils. This just in. Dr. Breathe has just asked the patient's dad to stop smoking. Experts say that smoking and passive smoking can lead to more asthma symptoms, more frequent asthma attacks, and asthma sufferers will benefit less from medication. There's a known fact that smoking damages your airways, leading to inflammation and faster loss of lung function. Doctor. Uh, smoking damages the cilia in the lungs, which work to remove pollen and other irritants out of your lungs. The lungs will be less able to clean themselves, meaning mucus and substances can build up, increasing the risk of lung disease. Thank you, Doctor. Back to you, Frank. Thank you, Chester. I know we'll all breathe a lot easier tonight. That's all from us. Good night, Australia.